Hello everybody, Jennifer Maker here. It's a beautiful day to make something colorful to welcome springtime to our outdoor spaces. Today I'm going to show you how to make your own gorgeous garden flags. I'll walk you through personalizing and sublimating them so they turn out just right. I'll even show you how to make one that's double-sided for even more color in your garden, even if your flowers have a way to grow still. So let's head on over to the craft table and we'll get started. Can you tell I just love spring? It's truly one of my favorite times of year. When the snow melts and the sun comes back out, it is just the best. Those of you like me who live where it snows know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so why not celebrate all of the beautiful colors of spring with a bright and cherry garden flag? These sublimated garden flags are actually easier to make than you might think, and you just need a few important supplies and tools. First, you need a blank garden flag. I'm using these sublimation blank garden flags from Amazon, which I have in both single-sided and in double-sided. So these are linked in my materials list below this video. Look for flags that are white and 100% polyester as those will work the best for sublimation. A garden flag holder is important too, so you can hang it out in your yard when your flag is all done. Now to sublimate our flags, we need some sublimation paper. I like the Asa brand, I think it works really well. And since our flags are bigger than our sublimation paper, right? I mean, this is a lot bigger than this, right? We need to attach multiple sheets together with some heat resistant tape. And I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that in this tutorial. Next, you need a sublimation printer. It's important to note that a regular inkjet or laser printer won't work for this project. You need a printer designed for printing sublimation projects or a printer that's been converted to print with sublimation ink like I have done here. If you are new to sublimating and need help choosing a printer, I've got you covered. I have a whole tutorial on sublimation for beginners. It's over at jennifermaker.com slash sublimation for beginners. I highly recommend it. Lots of videos and tutorials. Today, I'm using my converted Epson EcoTank with Hippo ink. They both work great. You also need a way to cut your sublimation paper. I'm using a paper trimmer because I find it to be just the easiest tool for this project, but of course you could use scissors if you wanted. And since we'll tile the sheets together, getting the cuts right is extra important. Now to sublimate our design onto our garden flags, we also need a heat press. I'm using a Cricut Easy Press too, but any size heat press will work. Do not try to sublimate with an iron, it just doesn't get hot enough and your flag probably won't turn out the way you want. <laughs> and next you need a pressing mat, some white butcher paper, uh, some white heavyweight cardstock. I've got some big cardstock here. And it's very important to have proper ventilation. So open a window, get out a fan, be sure that you're being safe. It's very important as sublimation does generate some fumes. And lastly, you'll need a couple of things on your computer. If you don't already have it, install the free version of Adobe Acrobat Reader. And I'll share the link to that in just a moment. You also need a free Google account because we'll be using the Google Drawings feature, which is totally free, to customize our garden flag designs. And of course, you need a design to begin with. So let me show you how to get my free and very pretty, I think, garden flag designs to help get you started. Step one, get a sublimation design. You can use your own design or use one of my bright and springy designs that I created just for this tutorial. To find them, go to jennifermaker.com 483 and look for libraries in the red bar at the top. Then either click get a password if you don't yet have one or click enter the library. Search the page for design number 483 and when you find it, click it to download the zip file. Unzip the file and then open the folder labeled PNG and you'll see designs. Two include text and two are left blank so you can personalize the saying yourself. Here's what they look like. My full bloom one-sided design and here is the same design but with an area for personalization. My spring has sprung design is a double-sided option for garden flags that can be sublimated on both sides. And you can use the no text version of this one too to create your own personalized design. 
Today, I'm going to show you how to make the full bloom design with personalized text, as well as the spring has sprung double-sided design. You'll be able to use these same steps for any of the designs in this tutorial, or follow them to create your own custom designed flag. Step 2. Prepare your sublimation design. Let's make the single-sided, personalized, full-bloom flag first. We'll prepare the designs in Google Drawings, which you'll access via Google Drive. So make sure you have a free Google account. Google has an app which allows you to access Google Drawings, but I recommend using your computer instead for the best results. Be sure to also use the Google Chrome web browser when you do this. Open Google Drive at google.com slash drive and click on New. Then go to More and select Google Drawings. Once Google Drawings is open, click the File menu and then click Page Setup. In the pop-up, select Custom and input your flag's dimensions or the area that you want to decorate. I want to decorate my entire garden flag, including the pocket for the hanger. You'll also want your printed design to be a little bigger than the item that you're sublimating so you get a full bleed. My garden flag is a little smaller than 12 by 18 inches, which is what it says on the packaging, so I'm going to use 11 and a half by 17 and a half inches. And now click Apply. Next, under the Insert menu, select Image and Upload from Computer. Go to the downloaded PNG folder, find the file named Sublimation Garden Flag, one side, no text, and click Open. Here's what the image looks like in Google Drawings. You'll notice that your image is slightly smaller than the page. Let's resize it so it fits. On the toolbar, click Format and then Format Options. In the panel, click Size and Rotation, and you'll see the image properties. Make sure the lock aspect ratio box is unchecked and then change the width to 12 inches and the height to 18 inches or about a half inch bigger than your flag's measurements. Now let's center the image. Click and drag it into place and a thin red line will appear where your image is perfectly centered. Make sure it's centered vertically and horizontally. Now we need to add text. Go to the insert menu and select text box. Use your cursor to draw a rectangle in the blank area of the design. I want my garden flag to say, live life in full bloom. I'll type live life in full and highlight the text. To change the look, find the font icon in the toolbar. Your font is probably set to Arial, but you can use any of the typefaces listed. You can also select more fonts and browse Google's collection. They are all free to use. If you know what font you're looking for, go ahead and type it in the search bar. I'll use this one called Amatic SC, and then click OK. Your text might look pretty tiny right now, so let's resize it. Back at the top in the toolbar, you'll see the font size box. Let's try 115. That looks great to me, but you may find you like yours bigger or smaller. The choice is up to you. I'd also like to change the color of my text, and you can too. With the text selected, click the text color icon and select any color you'd like. I like this dark green. Repeat these steps to create a second text box below the first. Now I'll type in bloom. Then I'll highlight my text, go back to more fonts, and choose the font Sophia. Then I'll change the size to 225. Looks good. Center the text in the box by going to the toolbar and selecting the Align icon, and then choosing the Centered Text option. Now I'll rearrange my text boxes until I'm happy with the placement. Hover over the edge of your text box until you see your cursor change to four arrows. Then click and drag your text where you want it to be. Doesn't this look great? To save the file to your computer, click Untitled Drawing up at the top and change the name to something you'll remember, like Full Bloom Garden Flag. Then be sure to download the file as a PDF. Step 3. Print your sublimation design. So if you don't yet have it, Adobe Acrobat Reader, which is free, you'll want to download and install the free version of Adobe Acrobat Reader at jennifermaker.com acrobat. At the top, click File and then Open. 
and open the PDF that you just saved from Google Drawings. Now go back to the file menu and select print. In the print dialog box, select poster, set the overlap to 0.2 and check the box next to cut marks. Using the poster setting will print your design across four sheets of eight and a half by 11 inch paper if you're using the same size flag as me. Next, click the printer button in the lower left corner. This lets you set up for sublimation printing. A pop-up may appear asking you to set all of your print options from your application's print dialog box, so click yes. Now I'm on a Mac using my converted Epson EcoTank, so my screen may look different than yours. That's okay though, you can still use my screen as a guideline. It's important to note that all sublimation printers have slight differences in their print options and settings. For example, some printers require that you select mirroring while others will automatically mirror for you. Be sure to check your sublimation printer's instruction manual in case your steps are different from mine. I also have many sublimation tutorial videos that you can watch to learn more about your printer. While printer settings do vary, the main things we want to watch for are using the print dialog box so you can choose the paper type and using the best quality print setting. These are the keys to successful sublimation printing. In the next window that appears, scroll down, click the arrow next to layout. Scroll down a little more and make sure flip horizontally is toggled on. Make sure you have sublimation paper loaded correctly into your printer and then click print. As your sheets print, set them aside to dry. Step four, prepare your print for sublimation. First, let's lay out the pages and take a look at them. You'll notice that the color looks a bit different than how it appears on your computer screen. This is completely normal, don't let it worry you. The color will brighten up once it's sublimated onto your garden flag. On some of the corners, you should see what looks like L's with a straight line between them. These are registration marks, and we're going to trim the pages using the middle straight lines as guides. If we start with the upper left page tile, we're going to number our pages 1 through 4 going clockwise. Take tile 1 and trim both the long and short edges of the paper, using the horizontal lines as a guide. This will effectively remove the white border so there is only ink remaining at the edges we want to tile. Repeat this on all four panels. Place a piece of heat resistant tape under the center corner of the first panel so the sticky side is face up. This will help tack your panels in place and keep them from shifting as you're aligning them. Using heat resistant tape as you go, place tile 2 on top of tile 1, lining up the design. Remember, we built in 0.2 inches of overlap when we tiled this in Adobe Acrobat Reader back in step 3, so you won't lose any of your design when you do this. This does take some patience, so do take your time. Just be careful not to tape over any sublimation ink. If you do, your design won't sublimate in that area. Continue this for the remaining tiles, placing tile 3 on top of tile 2, and then tile 4 on top of tile 3. If you have a full coverage design, you can add small amounts of tape to the back to keep it together without shifting. But be aware that it adds another layer and sometimes it can leave an impression mark. So avoid the tape if possible, or only use a little bit. Try to tape in the areas outside of the design if you can. And be patient. It's worth it to take your time and do this part right. And now it's time to sublimate our design onto our garden flag. For this project, the Cricut Easy Press is actually easier to use than a traditional heat press or the Cricut Auto Press. If you're using the Cricut Auto Press or traditional heat press or something similar, check out my tutorial on sublimating doormats for some great tips on sublimating large designs with a traditional style heat press. Place your heat resistant pressing mat on a flat surface. I like to use a countertop or a sturdy table. I don't recommend using an ironing board as it's just not stable and sturdy enough. Preheat your heat press to 380 degrees Fahrenheit or 193 degrees Celsius. And then preheat the entire garden flag for 10 seconds to remove any moisture. This will help the colors really pop on your sublimation design. 
If moisture is left in the material, your design may end up looking duller than you expect. If your flag is bigger than your press, which it probably is, work around it in sections, hitting for 10 seconds per section. Now go over your flag with a lint roller to remove any lint or debris. Place your tile design face up on your workspace. Then place the flag face down on your tile design. Remember the design will be a little bit larger than your flag, which is exactly what you want. This ensures the design covers the entire surface of the flag with no borders accidentally going unsublimated. Align the flag blank with the design until you're happy with the placement and then secure it with plenty of heat resistant tape. Take a large piece of white heavyweight cardstock and lay it on the pressing mat. Be sure it's completely covering the mat to protect it from any excess sublimation ink. You may need more than one sheet. And now we're ready to sublimate. Step 5. Press your sublimation print. Before you start, be sure to open a window or set up a fan to improve your ventilation. Sublimation dye fumes can be pretty strong and you don't want to breathe them in. Carefully turn over your prepared design and place it on top of the cardstock on the pressing mat, with the print side facing down. Cut another piece of butcher paper large enough to cover the entire prepared design and lay it on top. This will protect your heat press from sublimation ink. And now it's time to press. Make sure your heat press is preheated to 380 degrees Fahrenheit. Referring to how we tile the design, we're going to press it in a similar fashion. Start with the top left corner and place your Cricut Easy Press on top of the design. Start your timer and press it with light to medium pressure for 60 seconds. When the time is up, lift the Easy Press straight up and place it down on the top right corner. Set your timer and press for another 60 seconds. Repeat this process with the lower right corner and then the lower left corner, slightly overlapping each area that you just pressed. This will ensure you don't miss any spots. After the four corners have been pressed, place the easy press in the center of the flag and press once more for 60 seconds. Once the last section has been pressed, place your easy press back in its cradle and let your sublimated flag cool completely before removing your paper. You want to make sure your sublimation process has completely finished because removing your paper too early can affect your results. It can cause ghosting or blurring. And there it is. How beautiful is that? Double-sided garden flag design. Now I'll show you how to sublimate a double-sided garden flag. For this example, I use the double-sided spring has sprung design. If you'd like to personalize just the customizable side of the design on a one-sided flag, use the PNG file with garden flag double-sided front no text in the name. Follow the one-sided flag steps starting with personalizing your design in Google Drawings. To make our double-sided flag, the steps are very similar to the single-sided design that we just made, except we'll do everything twice. Use your free version of Adobe Acrobat Reader to open both of the double-sided garden flag PDF files. Print both sides of your flag design and set them aside to dry, making sure not to mix up the flag's front image with its back image. Then trim and piece the tiles of both designs the same way that you did with the one-sided flag design. Remember to take your time and be patient. Lining your pages up well will help ensure a successful sublimation. Use your lint roller to remove any fuzz or debris from one side of your flag. When you're ready, sublimate the design onto one side of your flag first, pressing in sections with light to medium pressure like before ending with pressing the middle of your flag. Once your flag has been fully pressed, let it cool completely before removing the paper. You may be wondering, why not sublimate both sides of the flag at once? Well, sublimating both sides simultaneously requires a heat press with super firm pressure, which we're not really using right now with our Cricut Easy Press, right? you won't be able to apply the right amount of pressure consistently to get a good result. So I highly recommend sublimating two-sided garden flags one side at a time. 
Okay, now repeat the previous steps again, starting with rem removing any lint from the back of the flag and aligning it blank side down onto the back flag design. Press and sublimate the back side of your flag the same way you did the front, making sure to use fresh butcher paper and cardstock for each side to ensure there are no residual ink transfers. Let the second side cool completely before removing the butcher paper. I am so thrilled with how these garden flags turned out. Aren't they just so pretty? I can't wait to put these in my garden for a pop of color this spring. The personalization really makes these something special, but be warned, your neighbors will probably start asking you to make flags for them too when they see what an awesome job you did. Now remember that tiling the design parts does take some practice. Just take your time. That's my best advice for sublimation projects and really crafting in general. Sometimes it does take more than one try and that's totally okay. Now, after hanging outside for a season, your garden flag might need a good cleaning. You can hand wash it in cold water, then hang it to dry or tumble dry on low. Then it'll be all ready when the next spring rolls around. If you'd like to learn more about sublimation, come check out my sublimation startup mini course at jennifermaker.com slash sublimation startup. I walk you through how to get your sublimation printer all set up with the right ink, show you all of the awesome tools that you can use. I also show you how to use free software to print and press gorgeous sublimation projects. And I share tons of ideas for projects that you can sublimate. You can sign up right now and learn at your own pace at jennifermaker.com slash sublimation startup. I also have a group just for sublimation crafting where you can get and share tips with other sublimation crafters just like yourself. Whether you're new to sublimation or a seasoned pro, come join us at jennifermaker.com slash sublimation group. And please share your pictures of your garden flags too. I want to see all of your beautiful garden flags welcoming spring to your home. And that's it for today. Until next time, this is Jennifer Maker reminding you to craft a life you love. <music>